Thanks for tuning in to our on-demand webinar, everyone. This is called Fill Your Mobile Teams Cup. And this session is for you if you're looking for ways to improve the experience for your tireless teams on the road. We're your hosts. I'm Mel. I run brand here at Cardata. Hi, I'm Lee. I'm an AE here at Cardata, and I actually used to be in the beverage industry myself. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, did you know I work for the beer store, Lee? No way! Oh yeah, I've got scars on my hands to prove it. <laughs> but I definitely don't have your experience in the industry, so tell us more about your background. Yeah, um, so I actually worked at Labatt Brewery, the head office. Um, it's one of the biggest beer producers and distributors here in Canada. Um, and now I help customers in the beverage industry um, and also lots of other industries really to optimize their costs and operations to make lives really a lot better for their reps on the road. Awesome. So for today's agenda, we'll cover a brief intro, insights into mobile team reimbursement benchmarking, a case study from one of our customers in the beverage industry, and real solutions and plans for our team. I'm so excited. I'm excited too, Mel. Let's get this party started. Woo! <laughs> All right. Sounds awesome. So, Lee, what's the lay of the land right now for distributors? Yeah, for sure, Mel. So I think what's really evident and crucial to distributors today is also what we've been seeing as really a general market trend across many industries. But specifically to distribution, where exceeding sales goals and staying under budget are two of the really main priorities in 2023. Although they seem contradictory sometimes, they don't have to be. One, teams need more help more than ever to succeed in forms of tools, resources, culture, and support from their organizations so that they can su successfully hit their targets. Employees are therefore looking for fair and transparent compensation and rewards packages. They want to know what's expected of them and what they're getting in return. And boy, is it ever competitive out there. Employee retention has been harder than ever. Turnover is also a big deal. It's a notable problem for a lot of companies right now. Then on the other side, finance and op teams have extra microscopes on them to, you know, ensure their cap allocation and their spending is going towards the right places. Every penny is being scrutinized and looked for at its ability to really drive long-term value. Um, and then finally, at the end of the day, you know, getting your product into customers' hands is the fine, final result, right? That's really what we're trying to accomplish. You need to make sure you're building your brand and that people are happy. Um, that also includes, you know, building sustainability as a company and distributor, um, really making sure that's a core focus, essentially in the days of procurement and supply chain challenges. That's really crucial. I totally agree there. So what would you say you're hearing the most about from our customers and prospects? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question, right? And, and all of these come up often, Mel. Um, but definitely, I think, you know, employee retention and scrutinizing purchases and costs are extremely important right now. And that really brings us to mobile teams. I've worked on the distribution side, and I know firsthand that driving is deeply ingrained in what beer, wine, and other beverage companies do. In fact, it's integral. You can't be successful without your road teams. Um, they're the faces of the company. They're the hands-on sellers. They're the display merchandisers. And they're the product providers, right? Um, and some companies, therefore, see driving for work as just another sunk cost. It's an operational cost. Um, but it doesn't have to be, right? With thousands of employees on the road every single day, each one of them making multiple stops a day, getting your product into hands, they require hundreds of miles per month to be reimbursed, which ultimately results in hundreds of thousands of dollars of reimbursement costs every single year. That's amazing. And it's just remarkable how the volume really that we're seeing. So um, would you say that it's really crucial to the success of the business? Well, exactly. Right. And, and that's why it's sometimes perceived as a sunk cost because it's again, so deeply ingrained with the business, but with the right framework and program in place, this goes from being a perceived sunk operational cost to more of a strategic cost, right? Um, it's something that we can better demonstrate through ROI and operational savings, as well as employee retainment. Um, so I see this really day in and day out with companies taking the time to appropriately evaluate how much their people drive, um, how much they're reimbursing and how easily we can get to the situation where they're accidentally overspending, which is bad for the organization or underspending, which is bad for employee retention. Companies feel hopeless, right? They feel like 
Where is this beautiful in between? Where are we being more strategic? How can we take advantage or rather, you know, regroup and say, let's take a look at this from the perspective of strategy versus just throwing money into, into an operational cost. Companies are going at this alone. Sometimes it feels unsolvable, but that's not necessarily the case. There are other options out there. Okay. Let's look at a solution that is often overlooked by internal teams managing mobile employees. It's called the VRP. So what is a VRP, right? What does it stand for? Essentially, a VRP is a vehicle reimbursement program, or for the sake of Cardata, could be a vehicle reimbursement partner. It's an outsourced solution that uses vehicle and geographical specific driving data, along with a mobile application and GPS capturing to record and submit mileage accurately promptly and up to IRS compliance standards, resulting in a fair and appropriate business use reimbursement. Just like other tech innovations, they often make our lives easier. It's a game changer for managing vehicle programs, which really frees up your team from the in-house burden of managing this alone while also saving your company money. So let's go into some more traditional programs we see companies leveraging to highlight the potential setbacks. These are three traditional programs that companies commonly use. The first is an allowance. You pay your employees a flat monthly allowance to cover their business driving expenses. The second is a fleet of company vehicles. You may own or lease a number of vehicles that are given to employees, sometimes with stipends or chargebacks. Gas cards can often accompany fleets as an added expense with very little oversight. The third can be as simple as your organization using mileage logs on a spreadsheet or an expense management tool to track monthly mileage. These can also be accompanied by gas cards. Now, let's go through the shortcomings of these programs. Let's start off with traditional car allowances. The drawbacks of providing a car allowance become abundant and apparent if you've ever used one. First, it's subject to income tax. Additionally, it's not tailored to the needs of regionally sensitive employees. As everyone receives the same amount, regardless of their driving habits. Someone from California could be receiving the same amount as someone from Oklahoma, but the cost of driving there is not necessarily the same. By using a car allowance, companies are spending an excessive amount of money on taxes, but for no reason. Even through an $800 car allowance, it might seem appealing, but in reality, only $500, give or take a few, goes into your employees' pockets. The remaining 300 bucks is paid in taxes. That's across both income tax for the employee and FICA for the employee and the employer. Moving on to fleet. They tend to be a significant sinkhole for companies. The hidden costs associated with owning a fleet can be enormous. Additional expenses such as repairs, liability, storage, reconditioning, and fuel can easily double your expenses related to your fleet. Additionally, in today's market, acquiring new vehicles can be a challenging task. You can actually check out our fleet webinar on demand or on our YouTube channel right now. Bottom line with fleets, it is crucial for businesses to closely examine their fleet expenses and identify ways to reduce costs efficiently. Last, we have mileage tracking through spreadsheets or expense tools, which can be an extremely time-consuming process. As I mentioned previously, the distance driven is not accurately reflected unless the odometer readings are diligently tracked, and taking additional personal stops are often reimbursed or undocumented by the employee, leading to short changes on both sides of, of the spectrum, right? Either your employees over reimbursed or they're under reimbursed. Additionally, forecasting expenses from mileage reimbursement can be a challenge as your team scales and territory changes. To sum up, traditional programs are inadequate in keeping up with the latest technological advancements. Modern solutions such as VRPs that provide regional reimbursements, tax-free payments, and smart tracking have been proven to be the ideal solution for a majority of companies. Programs like fleet or manual mileage logs are the old ways of doing things. At Cardata, we've really pioneered in this space for the last 20 years because we recognize that outsourcing this major spend, especially in the distribution space, um, is, is a really the best way to do it with a trusted partner who's experienced in IRS compliance. So what are the three types of programs we offer at Cardata? What are VRP options? Well, let's start with FAVOR. FAVOR stands for Fixed and Variable Reimbursement. 
is typically the most common used in the industry as it's seen as the most fair option. This specific strategy for reimbursement essentially leverages geographical specific and vehicle specific information that influences a person's driving expenses. It basically proves to the IRS in a very granular way that the money you spend on your drivers is attributed to cost, right? Every little bit of money that your drivers are taking home for use of business purposes is captured correctly through the use of application and appropriate tools. Now, a fixed and variable rate has two portions. The first is a fixed portion. That includes depreciation, insurance, license and registration fees. And the variable portion is going to differ depending on location. What is fuel cost in the area? What about maintenance? What about tires? That variable portion is directly multiplied by the amount of mileage that somebody is reporting. This essentially allows you to reimburse your employees for actual business use based on the type of vehicle required to do the job. Essentially, if you can meet fire favor compliance rules, you pay zero tax. The other two less common options are tax-free car allowance and CPM. If we start with tax-free car allowance, it essentially means that you're paying your employees a flat rate. Now, how is that different between a flat taxable allowance? Well, there's only really one rule. Car data will compare driver reimbursements to the IRS standard rate. If they receive more than their mileage times the IRS standard rate, only the difference is taxed. This essentially means that you're then allowing your employees to claim back business use. So with accurate partnership and accurate tech support, then your drivers are going to see a significant reduction in tax. The last option is cents per mile. Now, how is this different between a mileage log? Well, good question. In an accountable cents per mile plan, you're providing your drivers with the tools to accurately su support and report their mileage. What does that mean? Instead of holding a manual mileage log, they are then being reimbursed for actual miles driven. It is easier for them through the use of appropriate technology to report and easier for you to extract business intelligence and information with regards to productivity. They then have appropriate IRS compliant mileage logs and you're reimbursing adequately. Those are the three types of reimbursement. Today, we're gonna to be focusing more on favor as it tends to be the you know, most popular approach. However, it's possible to have your employees on multiple programs, right? The needs of your drivers are, are going to be different depending on their job. Some people drive more, some people drive less. Some people's compensation packages are different. And ultimately, when you work with a partner, our job is to work with you to help decipher what does the best program look like? What can combinations look like? What about hybrids? How do we effectively track your program and measure for success? What do KPIs look like? That's what your partner's for, and that's how we'll help you achieve success. So here's the information you've been waiting for. How are companies in the beverage space, how are my competitors reimbursing their drivers? Well, here are four examples. Company one pays their drivers an average fixed rate of $468 per month. This is calculated understanding their unique goals, budget, and market costs evaluated in partnership with our experts and is based off a single vehicle profile. This vehicle profile is ultimately selected based on the car required to do the specific job for which employees are reimbursed. It then takes into account this vehicle's depreciation, this vehicle's age, and the company's selected insurance requirements, as well as other considerations to determine the fair fixed rate. The variable rate associated with this vehicle profile was determined to be around 22 cents per mile, averaged across the range of U.S. states. Ultimately, the variable payment will mirror the cost of driving in their very specific area relative to fuel prices and maintenance expenses. When their driver's average approximate mileage is around 976 miles per month, for example, that amounts to a $683 tax-free reimbursement back into their pockets every single month. Before the transition, these drivers were only taking home $500 per month after tax on a flat allowance. At these rates, drivers are now seeing over $2,000 back in their pockets every year, tax compliant and tax free. We see similar patterns for companies two, three, and four. Variable factors such as the location where they fill up their gas tank and their regional insurance are taken into account through our technology. If reimbursements seem lower, it could be due to a a plethora of reasons, right? It could be due to the fact that they're filling up in zip codes with cheaper gas prices. 
It could also be due to the fact that their vehicle profiles are based on a less expensive vehicle. Another factor could be that their region is just less expensive to live and drive in. As you can also see, driver numbers can vary. For example, some companies only have 20 or so drivers on their program. Other companies have 200, 300, or even thousands of drivers on favor programs. Essentially, each of our customers builds their vehicle profile with us, and we help advise on how to build the most strategic programs for your company. Then we revisit the numbers and share individualized benchmarking reports to give you intelligence into driving and reimbursement patterns. This, in turn, can help you to better optimize your teams on the road. Some examples of how companies leverage these insights is those who hire more field teams in specific regions that are overdriven to help answer to these volume levels. Employee stress goes down when they know their organizations have their back and are not over asking of their regions. Vehicle reimbursement programs ran through an expert partner have the power to provide an all-in-one cost management solution for companies with teams on the road. To start, VRPs can save beverage distributors up to 30%. That's a significant cost reduction. Um, it can be a, you know, a major win for finance teams, especially considering, you know, business priorities of 2023. Our reimbursement programs are IRS approved and document real-time mileage, making them tax compliant. Employees can offer fixed and variable reimbursements or a tax-free car allowance, depending on their preference. As well, vehicle reimbursements conducted through a partner can exist as a straightforward line on a profit and loss statement, right? Um, which is advantageous for companies wishing to rid themselves of hidden or unexpected expenses with the current programs such as, you know, leased or owned company vehicles. By utilizing a VRP, businesses can easily track the reimbursement expenses and compare them month over to month. Where are we trending? Where do we need to adjust to ensure that we are making relevant decisions year over year? Now, VRPs can also reduce administrative tasks for finance and HR teams by managing compliance, insurance, licensing, and other admin heavy activities. This frees up valuable time for these teams to focus on core businesses and provides cost savings to the company for their time saved. These time savings are also important factors to consider, right? Hours of admin work um, for drivers is cut down by using a reliable, trustworthy application to track and capture mileage versus an expense report to log odometer readings or map routes. Did you know that the average driver wastes a full week per year using manual mileage logs for IRS compliance? Seriously? Yep, that's true. Data shows that it takes workers approximately three and a half minutes to manually log all the information that the IRS requires for mileage compliance. So odometer, business purpose, destination, total mileage, just to name a few. So if they're doing it right, they're wasting valuable time. And if they're not, well, they're most likely rounding up their mileage to make a calculation easier, leading to overpayment. When a trusted application paired with IRS compliant reimbursement program is used and tracking is private, it means that you know it takes place on the employee's phone. It's only logged based on their preferred preferences or their schedule. That five mile detour for groceries is therefore not counted as business use. This, this mixed with you know, the ease of use um, ultimately cuts the manual load drastically. A VRP is also scalable and can easily accommodate new sales reps as they join the team. Programs can you know, be highlighted as, as a job perk when advertising for new positions as they're not taxable. And VRPs have the power to cover both fixed and variable expenses, which is known as a program called FAVOR. This tailored approach makes the program IRS compliant, tax-free, and covers fixed costs like insurance, depreciation, as well as variable costs like gas and maintenance. This ensures that employees are fully reimbursed for their actual driving, not their estimated driving, and employers have full visibility into their reimbursements. Overall, VRPs are easy to implement, and at Cardata, we provide a fully managed program with a complete team of solutions engineers and customer success managers to guide businesses every step of the way and beyond. This is a case study from one of our customers that is very interesting. The amount they've saved in one year alone is staggering. Here's their story. They have around 150 drivers who were previously on a $600 per month taxable allowance program, along with an uncapped gas card. They moved to a favor program with us and tailored their reimbursements to be more regionalized. 
Some employees were shifted to a CPM program with the opportunity to move to a favor program once their driving patterns were better understood through complete data. Case studies like this are a common occurrence for our customers. The amount of tax savings is exponential compared to the cost of a VRP program itself. So Lee, that's awesome, um, seeing $420,000 in savings. So what are some companies doing with that surplus? Yeah, that's a great question. That's really interesting, Mel, because at this point of the process, it's really up to them. However, some customers come back to us and they share what they're doing or they ask for suggestions, right? We typically see some businesses looking for the ideal split between reinvesting their tax savings back into their company and giving it back to their drivers in their driver's pockets. So essentially, businesses are looking for that happy medium between the two. Overall, they see a net cost reduction in the program and then are able to also ensure employees take home more. That's possible. And we see that in example with our benchmarking study. In fact, some organizations say that as long as they're close to cost neutral, sometimes they want to give it all back to their employees. This can mean around a 15% pay increase to mobile reps, which attracts and retains talent um, in a really challenging industry where turnover can be high due to long hours, laborious deliveries, and things like salary. Cost reinvestment is entirely up to you. And thanks to our reporting and analysis, you'll know exactly how much you've saved. So you can report this back to your leadership team and plan for the reinvestment that best suits your company's needs. So why do reps love VRP so much? Why am I so excited about it? Well, these facts keep coming up from speaking with our customers and our administrators. As you likely know, sometimes reps can stop up to 15 times in one day at various locations to sell or distribute product. If you're logging 15 stops per day manually on a spreadsheet, at about two minutes or so per stop, that's conservative. The average is around three and a half. It's about 30 minutes per day or around three hours a week if you have a heavy week. That's a huge amount of time that you pay your drivers to spend manually doing these administrative tasks, causing them headaches. Not to mention managers having to approve these logs and cross-reference with data that is a lot of the time miscalculated due to human error. A huge factor in why reps are more satisfied with a VRP than a traditional program is because they're fair. The program identifies the regional variable cost associated to a person's driving and calculates their reimbursement accordingly. Reps also love VRPs because they get to pick the vehicle they want to drive. On average, our distributor customers have about two to three vehicle profiles per program. Now that ranges, it depends on if they have a hybrid program, but often with favor, we like to tier approaches if that best fits our customers' needs. That means that any vehicle that falls under the MSRP of those ranges is accounted for in the fixed portion of the reimbursement. A merchandiser, for example, may need a different vehicle to drive than a sales rep. Perhaps they're presenting differently. Perhaps those are two separate tiers. And the VRPs can accommodate this beautifully with a tiered approach. Also, reps are looking for ease and our app helps them to log all of their mileage accordingly even if they're not in a good service zone. And we can offer multiple programs to you at the same time. Some of your mobile teams could be on a CPM and some on favor, right? We'd then analyze and assess when someone may need to move between the two for IRS compliant purposes or for company goals. Overall, we've seen employee retention rates rise thanks to the implementation of vehicle reimbursement programs. Total compensation packages increase, driver headaches and administrative burdens decrease, and they feel their organization is truly looking out for them by implementing a modernized, tailored solution to fit their needs. Nice. Uh, that's awesome, Lee. So if anyone's tuning into this, um, what do they have to do to switch? How do they make that change? Yeah, another great question, Mel. Um, you know, many companies come to us and they're asking this. How long does it take? How much will it cost? How can they, they stay you know, current, up to date, and also keep their employees happy through the transition? Once you engage with experts, the rest is all you know, turnkey. We said we'd give you an action plan at the start of this conversation, and now we're gonna offer you one. Uh, here's what it looks like when you sign up to a VRP. So we pride ourselves on the transparency, but also the ability to fully manage this program for you. So let's start. 
Many of you watching are already doing this just by being here, but researching is a great way to start the process and finding the right vehicle reimbursement partner for your business. By looking up keywords such as favor or tax-free car allowance, you can really start the process as to looking at the different program options that are out there. Next, we suggest taking advantage of demos. Look at multiple providers, see what works best for your team. Then the real fun begins. By choosing a provider like Cardata, we offer you tailored, customized solutions based off your goals. Let's say you come to me and you say, Lee, I want to save my drivers 15% on their taxes. We can then work backwards from that outcome to create your idealized program. Our strategic program design definitely sets us above the rest when it comes to picking a VRP. From there, we work with you to determine pricing and create a contract. Once the provider is set up in the back end, they will then use their in-house tailored rate selector tools to help you find an ideal rate for your team and then add your drivers to their compliance tool. The provider will guide you and your team through the onboarding process, which may include resources such as webinars, specialized tools, and live driver training. Good support is critical here. It is crucial for the transition. So ensure you look for a VRP with world-class support specialists like those at Cardeva. Their experts can guide your team through any issues that might arise, taking the burden off your shoulders. They should feel very comfortable reaching out to your partner to you know, be their go-to tax expert, be their go-to software expert to ensure that your partner is taking care of you. Finally, sit back and watch the savings roll in. Providers like Cardata can also you know, ensure that we're giving you access to benchmarking and annual reporting to track your company's progress. Sweet. Yeah, I think with a fully managed provider, it really takes the pressure off those internal teams that are doing it themselves and they just need to get it right. Cool. So that's actually all, I think. I, I, if that's it, we covered it all, Lee. Thank you so much. Um, that was so informative, interesting, and I think that you just broke it down really beautifully, so appreciate it. No problem, Mel. It's what I do every day. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. So <laughs> if you tune into this on demand, you can check us out on um, cardata.co or visit our LinkedIn page or our YouTube channel for more information. Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.